Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the All About Favor channel. I am your host, Pastor KZ. Thank you all for watching. For all of my subscribers and the All About Favor fam, thank you so much for continuing to support the channel. Y'all, we are rolling on. Your support has really, really garnered a lot of attention in the YouTube channel, in the content creators. Y'all, thank you. You're making it possible. You're making my my participation in this visible to help other people and putting us as a All About Favor family in position to incorporate a lot of other things. A lot of other people are watching. I'm getting some emails from uh, some professionals who really, really like the fact that I am encouraging you to get therapy and I am encouraging you to continue journaling. So at some point, some of the professional counselors and therapists and, and different um, social network people that I'm in, in touch with, they're going to be coming on at some point this year and offering other means of and other options for you. So thank you again. For those of you who are new watching, please consider subscribing. And to everyone watching today, please hit the thumbs up button, like the video, share the video, comment on the video. And if you have not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's free to subscribe, y'all. Won't cost you anything. I guarantee that there's something one day out of the week that you're going to enjoy. I am on pretty much every day. I pop in on some Saturdays and I do give a word for the day on Sundays as well. Let's talk a little bit today on this Friday. I usually like to keep things light on Friday, but yesterday's episode of Tell the Truth Thursday, it bothered me. And you know, like I say, I receive emails and I like to share some of the emails with you. And I am doing follow-up emails on some of the things that I've received last year from the Thanksgiving Aftermath show, and I will be doing some updated Christmas Aftermath shows on Tell the Truth Thursday. I want to talk about the situation from yesterday's episode in particular about, I asked the question, have you ever had a parent who passed away and the other parents seem to have moved on very fast? Now, I I just don't quite know how I would feel about that. I, I really don't know because it's never happened to me. But that's why I'm asking you, what what are y'all thoughts about that? How how do you feel about that? Or let me let me just throw this curveball in. What if you're in a situation and your spouse or your life partner or your husband pass away? or your wife pass away. How soon do you think is too soon to begin the dating process? Okay. And have you ever saw someone that husband or wife passed away and gosh, it seemed like it was only a few months ago and they already have a new person and you kind of looked at them with a side eye. Have have you ever done that? Now that I have done. I have witnessed someone whose wife passed away and I'll say it. Do you not know the day of the funeral, the girlfriend walked in the church with him, but fiending as a Mm, close friend. Let's even go so far as to say God, daughter, something of that nature. And the Wednesday after the funeral, they were married. Okay, you churchgoers, Christian folks, Bible thumpers, how long should you wait after a partner passes away? Now, I got some people already have told me, have already written me and told me just in an overnight. A couple, I got a couple of emails last night and they said, Pastor Casey, I don't know what he doing. But me personally, if my husband died a day or tomorrow, I'm done with the, the relationship thing. I ain't trying to marry nobody else and I ain't trying to have no boyfriend. Does that mean you won't have a friend? 
I'm just making sure because when you sent me that email, I'm just trying to be sure. And then I had a man say, well, Pastor K, I don't see nothing wrong with the brother, what he's doing. All right, y'all, shall we side eye him? Boy, bye. Because you men stick together on this, huh? What if it's your daddy doing this? Well, I broached that issue when I responded to his email. And you know what he said to me? I loved my mama. Loved her. She was a saint. But daddy had needs to be fulfilled. Hmm. Wow. Not sure how I feel about that. Just I just wanted to come on today for a brief pop-in. A brief, just random thoughts. See what you're thinking about this. And also, as to the auntie, I think I understand how she got out of character, she say, and just went off on her brother-in-law. I think, even though initially I agreed with you all when you said having the Christmas Eve celebration at the house was a good idea, now that I'm thinking about this, I don't think it was. I, I, I know why I thought it was initially a good idea because I thought just being in the same space where the kid's mother lived and your brother and your sister lived, your brother-in-law and your sister lived, I thought just feeling that energy, the spirit of your sister would be in the house. I don't know. That's where I was coming from. It was just good to like have those memories. But now that I think about it, I don't think that was a good idea. And I think if I had known from the beginning that the girlfriend, the woman, the new woman had already moved in, I would have uh, shot that idea down from the get-go. But I, by me not having that part of the story, I wasn't sure. But now, hindsight being twenty twenty, now hearing the letter, that you wrote yesterday and reading it and this woman done moved in already in your sister's home. I, I just don't think I would have ever went back there for no celebration. I think the niece should have had it at her home. Now, as to your brother-in-law, I know, I know you're angry with him, but understand this. And I'm not trying to defend your brother-in-law, sister, auntie. I'm not defending him because I know me, if that would be, I was in that same boat, I would feel some type of way too. If one of my sisters passed away and their husband flaunted around with their new woman, <laughs> I won't even say what just came in my mind because it would, number one, what came in my mind is illegal. And number two, <laughs> it is not the Christian way to think. But hey, I'm human, but I'm just saying. To my brother-in-laws, if y'all move on real quick with your new woman, don't invite me to the gatherings because I'm going to be looking at you side eye all night long with your woman. And all I'm going to be doing is hearing my sister's voice in my head. Girl, go ahead on and hit her. Girl, go ahead. I No, that's no, no. <sighs> Brother-in-law, let me say this. I think you out of pocket now. I know you grown. I know you, your wife ain't never coming back. But my God, for the sake of your children, I know they grown too. But just some things don't look good. And some things, you move this woman in, your wife ain't been dead a year yet. And then, this what I want to get you about. Boy, you keep telling your children you don't want things in the house disturbed because they just for the out of respect for their mama. And you won't let them girls come in there and get none of their mama clothes or jewelry. But you got your woman wearing the jewelry. You got your woman already in the bedroom. You won't let your son come in there and get him something out of the house or keep safe from his mama. Talking about out of respect for her and let her be, you know, rest at least a year before you move things around. Does that apply moving your woman in? I bet you you don't let this woman change the furniture around and do. First of all, let's let me let me back up, regress here, back up, Pastor KZ. Let me talk to your woman for a minute, girl. You already in this woman house, girl. You all right with that? You all right with your man moving you into his house that his wife just passed away in? 
You all right with that? Girl, he don't love you enough to build a house for you or buy a house and put you in or rent a house and put y'all in to start y'all new life. Girl, bye. Girl, have a seat. Over to the left, girl. I don't have much for you. What kind of woman are you? I ain't got much for you, girl, or him. As to the adult children, y'all get in some therapy. Y'all go to some grief counseling, please. Auntie, go with them. Because right now, those children are leaning on you. You know what? I know what it's like to lose a mother. I know what that feels like. And I know, y'all, it ain't easy. For those of you who have not lost a mother or a woman who raised you, such as a grandmother or an aunt, because those are your mothers. Y'all, I know what that's like. That pain just don't go away. That pain stays fresh all the time. And sometimes if you are not strong enough and you don't have a spiritual life that you can pray your way out of or, or something to lift you up, if you don't get out of the house and do things, if you don't surround yourself with people who love on you and who are supportive of you, that depression will eat you up. That way. And some days, some days you do feel like just staying in the house all day. You just don't want to be bothered. I don't, you don't want to talk to nobody. And I can say I, cause I've experienced it, still go through it. Some days I just, just can't talk to nobody. Can't see nobody right now today. Just need some inner peace day. Just need a day. And that's okay. So auntie, you and those girls, y'all get you some therapy. Journal, please keep journaling and please keep writing. And I want to say this to the All About Favor fam. Listen, I have received a letter, an email from both daughters about this incident. I just have not broken the emails down enough to share them because some one of them, I think this is the first daughter, the old, the baby daughter that wrote me. Her email is very long. Auntie, I will say this about your niece, this one that I'm talking about in particular. And you you know who I'm talking about. She needs she needs therapy. She needs help. Y'all better watch her very closely. Very closely. The older the older niece of yours, the older sister, the one that was gonna hope was hosting the party, she's a little bit stronger, but that other sister, that was the baby. She was mama's little girl little princess but this older one her issue is anger she is in a rage she got this rage inside of her the son he is um at a crossroads y'all uh auntie your nephew he loves his daddy and he can see it from his daddy's perspective but he's also hurt because he's missing his mama so don't y'all bash on him too much if he happens to say something that sounds like he is defending his daddy. He's very angry. I think he's more hurt than angry. He's more hurt that his daddy has replaced. He feels like his dad has replaced his mama too quick. So it's a lot going on with this family. Y'all could use some help and band together, stay together as much as possible and lean on each other for support. And please, when nothing else Nothing else. You got to not leave prayer out your life. I want to talk briefly. I'm not going to put much energy into the second letter that I read yesterday because I wasn't going to do that letter at all, but it's just in my spirit. It's something bothering me. I think it's the fact that it's the children in that marriage that's bothering me. You know, <clears throat> I feel both adults, this is my opinion, I think both of them are being a little bit selfish right now because they want to move on with their life, with their new partners. But somehow I just feel in my spirit these children are going to be devastated. How y'all feel about it? Give me your thoughts on it. And we'll talk again, uh, again on next week about this issue. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. This was just some random thinking on Fridays that spilled over from yesterday's uh, episode of Tell the Truth Thursday. Just want to get your feelings on it. I want to leave you, though, with something a little bit more uplifting. On this Friday, today, this, since we have brought to a close 2022, I want you all on today to start 
thinking about your wellness, your health. Remember now, you made some resolutions, you've made some goals, you've set some goals to get yourself in better physical health and better mental health. I need to know that you're working on this. So what I need for you to do is take your journal and include wellness, just, just include a little snippet of how you're getting along with your wellness checks. And also, please, if you are feeling frustrated, depressed, lonely, discouraged to a point where you just feel like you can't take it anymore and you can't function and you don't want to be on this earth anymore, please, if you don't feel like you can reach out to your family, if you don't feel like you can reach out to your church family, please call one of those hotlines. They have so many hotlines out there, y'all. The suicide hotline. Reach out and get help. Please, the best decision you can make is to get help. I am a proponent of getting therapy, getting counseling, journaling. I am a proponent of wellness and self-care. Y'all, life is not only tough for you sometimes, but you know what? If you keep getting up in the morning, that's an opportunity for your day to go right. God loves you. There's people out there who love you. We need you here. I need you here. If you're watching, please consider just getting help. Don't end it all. And please don't wallow in self-pity. Don't lay there and stay there in depression. Things are going to be better. Things are going to look up for you. It's going to be a great day. You're going to have a phenomenal weekend. You're going to have some fun today. You might catch a movie tonight. You might go out to dinner. Why don't you go and get you a nice big crab bag and something or some seafood if that's what you like. Or put you a nice steak in the oven. Do something for fun. And remember, laughter is good. Having fun is good. That's one of the reasons I look forward to doing uh, my sports wrap up on Monday because it gives me a chance to let my hair down and have some fun and I make you laugh in it. So everything about Pastor KZ is just not always serious. I like to lighten the mood up. So guess what? Have some fun tonight, okay? Have a wonderful day today and go to the gym. I know some of you have said you're going to start back going to the gym. Keep yourself protected. If you see it's too crowded in there and you're feeling uncomfortable with nobody with mask on, Cut your workout short and get out of there. Go for a walk in your neighborhood or something. Go for a walk at the park. Don't keep putting yourself in harm's way if you're feeling uncomfortable. Have a wonderful Friday, and I'll see you for a pop-in tomorrow, maybe. Have a great day. Thank you guys for watching.